Hey, this is The Sword and the Pen Reflections. It is my casual alternative to the formal channel, The Sword and the Pen, link up there. About three weeks ago, I asked for you guys to submit your favorite winter holiday sort of books, movies, and TV shows that maybe aren't necessarily Christmassy or wintry in nature. You just find yourself returning to them every single year around this time. I thought this would just be a fun thing to do as my last video for 2023. I am going to be getting right back onto my Wheel of Time and Avatar The Last Airbender stuff, as well as I'm debating if I should do Rings of Power since that's going to be coming out soon, but I don't really have a book to compare it to. I don't know. But let's get to your guys' wintertime favorites. Oh, before we get into that, actually, I wanted to give what I believe to be an explanation for why we do this, why there are certain stories we come to during certain times of year or when we're experiencing something, or maybe if we're just in a location that we go to regularly or every once in a while. And I got this idea, well, I heard this idea first from Cornelia Funke, who is an author who wrote the Inkheart series. She had one of her characters describe this, and I'm just going to read it so you can hear it. So this is from Inkheart, which is the first book in the Inkworld series. If you take a book with you on a journey, Mo had said when he put the first one in her box, an odd thing happens. The book begins collecting your memories. And forever after, you have only to open that book to be back where you first read it. It will all come into your mind with the very first words. The sights you saw in that place, what it smelled like, the ice cream you ate while you were reading it. Yes, books are like flypaper. Memories cling to the printed page better than anything else. And there's another quote from the second book, Ink Spell, and it's, it's a little similar. I'm just going to read that one as well. Isn't it odd how much fatter a book gets when you've read it several times, Mo had said, as if something were left between the pages every time you read it. Feelings, thoughts, sounds, smells. And then when you look at the book again many years later, you find yourself there too, a slightly younger self, slightly different, as if the book had preserved you like a pressed flower, both strange and familiar. I just find that to be such a wonderful concept that the book almost becomes this time capsule or this memory holder. And every time that you read it, you can go back to where you were, whether it's a place or a time. And I think that is why there are certain stories that we go back to every time that we travel to a certain place or every time a certain time of year comes around or maybe we're feeling a certain way, we just feel like we can go back to that original place where we first read it. But anyway, let's move on to your guys' stories. And I have to take my gloves off because I live in one of the warmest climates in the whole world and I think it's about 70 degrees outside and also I can't really navigate my phone without my fingers, so. Okay, so the first one I'm going to be reading out is from my first patron ever, Mix and Match. So Mix and Match, you posted four different stories. I'm gonna read just one, the one that resonated with me the most. The Tenth Kingdom miniseries. My mom watches it all the time this time of year. She even said she just liked to do it around this time for no particular reason. She had the DVDs stored with the Christmas DVDs and I just latched onto it as a tradition to see around the holidays, though I have watched it throughout the year. Maybe it's the fairy tale aspect that helps with the holiday feeling since it feels like magic when you celebrate this time of year. I gotta agree with that. Also, insert a clip of the trolls dancing to Night Fever for your audience, Amber, I dare you. <laughs> I just saw the 10th Kingdom for the first time this last summer and oh my gosh, I was cracking up through the whole thing. So if you watch that show, the wolf, I swear, that is Brian the dog from Up, but in adult human form and really naughty. <laughs> ah! 
You're fantastic. Your picture doesn't do you justice. Wow! No, I respond favorably to the audacity of a woman who flaunts her own aroma. Say Not sure whether I, I, I want a lover or eat her. Standingly gorgeous in the morning, pert from the front, and a vision from behind. We're on a very small boat. I may bump into her accidentally at any given moment. Hey! But, uh, yes, I absolutely love the trolls dancing to night fever. It is probably one of the best moments in, in fantasy that I have seen in a long time. But I can totally see how it's, you know, it's a magical show, it's a magical story, and it just, it makes you feel like the magic of probably Christmas for you. I, I totally get that. I could definitely see this being like a, a holiday favorite for you and for your family. And I'm guessing that you also uh, associate this with your mother and, you know, family time growing up. It's got to be such a wonderful, warm feeling every time that you watch it. The next comment comes from Tales of Teltra. For me, it would have to be The Princess Bride. It is something that all my family love and quote endlessly. So I guess the connection is that we get together and have this shared love and of an absolute masterpiece. Ditto to that. I absolutely love The Princess Bride. I mean, I, I can't even remember when I saw it the first time. I just feel like it was always around. But oh my gosh, yes, my family quotes it all the time as well. So I think you've made a really good observation there that it's probably something you do associate with family. And since this time of year for so many people is the time of year you get together with family and you're probably quoting with them a lot. So I'm guessing, yes, every time you just, you come right back to family time. So that is so great. You know, it's weird for me. I think of the fencing uh, my fencer friends a lot because we used to watch this movie together. I mean, it, you know, it's such a cliche thing. Oh, you fencers, you know, you watch fencing movies. It's, it's a weird phenomenon that every fencer I know absolutely adores The Princess Bride. But I also don't know many people who just don't enjoy The Princess Bride. I think pretty much everybody loves that movie or at least enjoyed it. It's just so funny. Please don't ever remake this movie. It would be a mistake. The next one is from Candid Wings. BBC's North and South from 2004, it's a miniseries adapted from the novel of the same name by Elizabeth Gaskell. The fluttering white cotton in the mill scenes, the slow burn romance, the cold climate, and even the overall color scheme is like a shift from fall to winter and then ending with hints of spring. That's a good one. I, I love North and South and I've seen it so many times. I think you're right. I think that the cotton kind of gives the wintry sort of feel. Also, there's this, uh, there's almost dead sterility that comes with, with winter and I don't, <laughs> I, I know that sounds brutal, but but um, the the sector that her family goes to, where the cotton mill is located, is is kind of this this dismal place. It, it gives this feeling of winter. I think also a lot of us associate Victorian era London, which is it Victor It is Victorian era, with. Um, with uh, Charles Dickens. And so there's probably a little bit of association there. But yes, I, I think that, that that bleak, that was the word I was looking for, that bleakness of where they are. And yeah, the slow burn romance, oh, it's so good. If you haven't seen North and South, go and check it out. It's definitely worth watching at least once, especially if you love um, Jane Austen novels. Next is from Opio Tain. It says, Legend by David Gamel. It's short fireside myth slash fantasy. It gets me in the feels every time. I've actually never heard of this novel, but I went and I looked at at least the cover and uh, that was on Wikipedia. And I don't, for some reason, <laughs> the cover looks a little bit like a uh, Gimli. So, I mean, I have no idea what this story is about, but it is a British fantasy. And I think that there's gonna be a lot of people commenting with British fantasies. And I'm not sure what it is that the Brits do that is just, it, it really gets us into the winter spirit. But there seems like there's gonna be a lot of British fantasy on this list. Next is from Todd Jackson, who says, I find myself often going back and rereading Raymond E. Feist's The Serpent War Saga this time of year. Something about it getting dark earlier, bundled up under a blanket, curled into the corner of the couch, and letting my reading take my imagination on a fantastical adventure. I think what we're seeing there is that same thing where you as a child 
have a lot of memories, or maybe at least a young person, reading this story. And I mean, gosh, especially if you celebrate Christmas or other holidays during this time of year and you have your whole life, it's got to bring memories of, of being a child and anything that you did during then that was impactful in your life. I've never heard of this series before. Honestly, I've never even heard of this author before. I feel like I haven't read as much as I should have, especially in the fantasy genre. But I mean, I guess my job just takes over my reading time so much that I, I don't really go for a book unless maybe I've heard a bunch of people have read it and they really loved it, or maybe somebody who's, you know, their opinion I really trust, I'll go and read that. But this one sounds interesting. Just from what I'm reading about it on Wikipedia, it seems to be a uh, sword and sorcery sort of fantasy novel. Uh, it says that it follows a kingdom, uh, the struggles of a kingdom against a massive army on the distant continent of Novindus. So if you're into, I'm guessing, war sagas, that's probably one you might want to check out. Looks like there's only three books in the series, but maybe some others that take place in the same world. So if you're looking for a nice short series. The Machine Gun Bunny says, The Village. This is the movie, the M. Night Shyamalan movie. I feel like that's a fall movie for sure. Also, so random, but any major epic movie. Like, Dune feels like a Christmas movie. I have no idea why, but it's so big and epic, it feels like Christmas. Okay, The Village I get, because <laughs> The Village, the story uh, in the movie The Village takes place in winter or right before winter. It all the trees have no leaves on them. It's again, that bleak feeling. So I can totally see that. It's weird because for me, the village is more like a, a fall time movie, but I guess it kind of bleeds into winter. I live in the desert, so we don't really have, you know, like four seasons. We basically have summer and like very mild winter, but we don't get, you know, the changing of the leaves or anything like that. I don't really get Dune being a Christmas movie, but for me, I feel like I would be drawn to the big older epic movies like Ben-Hur and the Ten Commandments and uh, just big epic movies, usually biblical, I guess, because um, that was what my family would put on during Christmas time, especially my grandparents. They would have those big, you know, we, we weren't really allowed to watch movies or TV shows or anything really on TV uh, over at my grandparents' house, but those movies we were allowed to watch. And when Christmas time came around, we spent a lot more time over at my grandparents' house, and so those would be the movies that we would put on. So I wonder what the reason is. I wonder if you can figure out what what is it that brings you to big epic movies, and especially Dune. Did Dune come out during Christmas time last time? Yes. I know it was supposed to come out this year around Christmas time, but then it didn't, it got pushed to the beginning of next year, so I don't know. Color Seer says, Star Wars A New Hope, The Wizard of Oz, and The Great Escape. They were part of the background on TV every Christmas when I was growing up, so they evoke a sense of nostalgia. Though I also like to read or watch The Box of Delights by John Maysfield, which is a very win which is very wintry and Christmassy. Uh, it's a BBC 1984 miniseries. I have never heard of that miniseries, but I totally get the other ones. Actually, you know what's weird? I, th I think The Wizard of Oz I kind of associate with Christmas. Maybe it's because when the poppies are poisoning everybody, uh, the the good fairy sends um, she sends snow. I don't. <laughs> That's like the only thing I can think of. Oh, I know what else it is. In uh, the the Christmas story with, you know, Ralphie, when he goes to the mall to see Santa, the the Witch of the West comes and tries to talk to him because I guess the Wizard of Oz had just come out. So I think that's probably my association, association with the Wizard of Oz and Christmas is literally another movie. <laughs> I like the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Uh, this person's name I'm having difficulty saying, but Hamza Bujelua? I'll just put it up on the screen. Right now, Dune comes to mind. There's possibly a nostalgic connection to when I read or read or listened to the book, the first book during winter a few years ago. Something about Simon Vance's narration mixed with a warm orange lamp light and blankets make Dune a go-to winter book association. 
that and practically lived in the cinema during the winter of 2021 watching Dune on repeat. Okay, I, I mean, I totally get that. And yeah, I think you've nailed it. You've figured out what it is. It's so funny that there are two people who said Dune, which is a movie that I I have difficulty linking to Christmas. But in your case, yes, this, this makes total sense. Clever Max says, for me, it's Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Somehow, between Halloween and the weeks after when I start decorating my Christmas tree, the nostalgia hits me and I crave for my annual dose of Buffy. I think it's because of the mix between horror, epicness, and family, friends, vibes that pushes me towards the TV show, more so during that time of the year. There might also be a physical element to it because of the shorter days, the longer nights, the cold, thus feeling like scary stories around campfire. It's my go-to at the beginning of winter. I have not actually watched Buffy since, I would say it's been about 15, 16 years since I watched it. And I only watched it once all the way through, but I loved it. I really enjoyed it. I think I tried to get into Angel, but couldn't really get into it. But I, I think you got it there. You figured out what brought you to this one too. And that's an interesting observation about, you know, the longer nights and the wanting, you know, the, the ghost stories and stuff. And, and I'll have more to say about that when I get to my own favorites for this time of year. Perry Wolf, who is also one of my patrons, says, not so much December, but late November. My birthday is on the 22nd of November. Well, happy belated birthday. And I've read the Wheel of Time book series since they first started coming out in 1990. It so happens that each new book was always released mid-November. So for many, many years, I was almost guaranteed to receive the next Wheel of Time book for my birthday. Hence, the series has a special place in my heart and will forever come to mind during this time. Time. Nice. I've noticed that actually some of my patrons are rereading the Wheel of Time series uh, right around now too, and I wonder if it was something that they, they decided to do because the second season of the show came to an end and they wanted to go back and read the books again, or if it was like this just happens to be the time of year they like to reread it, because I know a lot of them will reread them every couple of years, or maybe every year, I don't know, but I know that they'll reread them a lot. I wonder if I'll become that sort of person with the Wheel of Time. I wonder. Book Cloaks says, Lord of the Rings, because the December 21st release dates for most of the movies, but also because the special edition DVDs were also released in time for the holidays. So I'd get the extended movie and then go see the next one in theaters. Still try and watch the trilogy over the holidays most years. I'm. I think there's a couple of people who mentioned The Lord of the Rings, and I am one of them, watching The Lord of the Rings every winter time. And maybe it's because, again, the bleakness. You know, after Hobbiton and uh, Rivendell, it, it just becomes kind of dark from there on. You spend a lot of time in Mordor. But also, yeah, it was one of those movies that I went and saw in theaters, a midnight premiere, and oh my gosh, so many good memories. I remember when Aragorn chopped off the uruk uh, head in the first movie the whole audience just went nuts. We were cheering so loud. I still think about that moment every time I watch the show or watch the movies. You know what's weird is when I read the books instead of watching the show, it's more of a springtime thing for me. Maybe it's because of the start in Hobbiton and I just associate Hobbiton with wonderful life warmth and fresh flowers and fresh cut grass, things like that. Well, not cut grass, but you get what I mean. Gingerbeard Geek says, the first two Harry Potter films make me feel very Christmassy, but I always watch Zulu as well, long before streaming, etc. We just had the four channels and for some reason Zulu was always on over Christmas and my dad watched it every time and we didn't have a choice but to watch it as well. I think this is a movie that I, I would have to categorize in with like the older big epic cinematic movies like that that I associated with Christmas and winter, you know, from going over my grandparents. It's a, a British epic war film depicting the battle of Rourke's dif, uh, drift between the British army and the Zulus. and. Okay, so I've, I saw this movie maybe once about 10, 12, no, longer than that. It was, oh my gosh, this, no, this was much longer ago. This was like 15, 16 years ago. So I had, I don't remember a whole lot about it, but it had that same vibe, you know, like the big epic movie, the, especially when you get the ones from the 60s, they, there's, there's a feel to those movies. It's funny that your dad would watch it every time and you guys had no choice. <laughs> I mean, it's not always the most pleasant, but it's funny that like something that you maybe didn't enjoy as much as a kid, now you've like, oh, this is my Christmas movie. Trigvar says, 
Die Hard, of course. I still remember the first time I saw it in theaters back in the day. I had just come back from the music store to buy Beethoven's Ninth, ninth Symphony on... It says DDD. D did you mean DVD? Is there a, a DDD that's like a thing? Is that like an 8-track player that I, I'm not aware of? I don't know. Uh, directed by Herbert von Karajan, or Karajan. And to my surprise, part of the symphony was in the movie. What a coincidence. Oh, that must have been kind of memorable that, you know, you, you'd gone to pick up this particular piece of music and then you go see the movie and you're like, hey, I just bought that. That must have been funny, but it, it felt like there was fate. Something something was moving in the universe to bring you to this movie and, and, and connect two parts of your life like that. Doc Hogan says, I often find myself going back to Jack London and similar books and adaptations this time of year. Sometimes Times, some post-apocalyptic nuclear winter stuff, high science fiction, and colder specfic. Maybe that's a misspelling. I've never heard of specfic. Oh, speculative fiction. Like Gibson and Stephenson. I've been thinking about uh, why that is since I posted my comment. I'm not really sure. My best guess is that I'm probably feeding or wallowing in my SAD. Oh, I'm sorry about that. When you said Jack London, though, I immediately thought of, uh, what was it? There was the uh, White Fang, obviously. And what was the other one called? It's the one with Buck, the dog. I can never remember the name of that book. The Call of the Wild. So both of those have uh, very big segments of the story that take place in winter. And so for me, it's just, it's that. That's what what makes me think of, of winter during that. Maybe that's it for you, I don't know, maybe. Rodney Trotter says, Die Hard is the best Christmas movie ever. And he got six likes for that, so. A lot of people agree. And yes, I have seen that. And if, it is absolutely a Christmas movie. I'm sorry. I mean, it I wasn't even one that I, I have only seen it once. And it's not one that is a Christmas tradition for me, but I will admit it's a Christmas movie. Just watch it. It's a Christmas movie. And you know what? God bless Bruce Willis right now and his family. That man brought a lot of joy and happiness to a lot of people. Jeff Turner, who is in Australia, says, maybe strangely, the Lord of the Rings trilogy is very much representative of Christmas to my kids and I. They all came out on Boxing Day here in Australia. Boxing Day, by the way, if you're uh, not from Great Britain or the uh, areas of the world that celebrate Boxing Day, it's the day after Christmas. And apparently it, uh, it came from Roman slash Christian, early Roman Christian times where um, where the, uh, the poor would leave out boxes for alms. And now it's like another gift giving day. They all came out on Boxing Day here in Australia, and we were all fantasy nuts. And even though they are our grown, <laughs> grown arse adults now, we still find a way to watch all three extended versions during the Christmas holidays most years. Do they do pine trees for Christmas trees in Australia? I've always wondered that. Look at that. Isn't that a nice little tree? We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. A. Gabriel Rose says, Kiwi's big adventure, because when he saves the snakes, it's the most Christian moment in cinema. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, if, you, if you've seen that movie, you know how funny a comment that was. That is great. <laughs> the most Christian moment in cinema. <laughs> I, I, could, I could buy that. Oh my gosh, that is funny. I'm gonna have to remember that from now on. Dan Wheeler says, Riria Revelations and Legends of the First Empire. And I replied, but I can't see what my replies are for some reason. Dan, I'm so sorry about that, but uh, I'm not even sure what Riria, Riria Revelations are, let me see. Oh, it's Theft of Swords. And I haven't read this one, but I've been seeing the reviews from my, my favorite booktubers love this series. So, okay, that's interesting. I honestly don't know anything about the series except that it's a high fantasy. So, I'll have to check it out. Beto Sessi says, you do remember that half the world is in summer right now, right? Yes, I remember. But about 75 to 80% of my audience is located in the Northern Hemisphere. So, so I'm addressing those people mainly, but I mean, I'm addressing all of you guys. Okay, what are your summer season? reads then. 
Jive Turkey says, I'm a sucker for traditional Christmas movies and shows. It's a Wonderful Life, Mickey's Christmas Carol, Miracle on 34th Street, Die Hard, etc. But the one thing I watch every year between Christmas and New Year's that definitely is not a Christmas show is Band of Brothers. Hmm. The story of the brotherhood and sacrifice that develops between the men of E Company during the horrible days they endured during uh, World War II resonates with me in a way that is hard to put into words. Oh, that's a good one. It's definitely a different one, different from the other. I mean, it's, I would consider Band of Brothers an epic movie, like a modern epic movie. We've had a few of those, but for, for you, identifying it as being the bond between uh, the men, I think that's, that's great. I love that. And the last comment is from Nixian Grid, who says, The Lord of the Rings because of the release dates or the wholesome aspect of it. Harry Potter, especially that Christmas decoration of the first movie. And The Night Circus, not sure why. Well, I totally get Harry Potter and The Lord of the Rings. Uh, Night Circus, that's an interesting one. Um, maybe you read it in the wintertime the first time? Mm -hmm. Maybe something about it reminds you about um, some other media that you like to consume during this time of year? Who knows? Um, but for me, my winter go-tos, I think I'm just gonna list uh, movies and TV shows and then books. So for me, books, Harry Potter. I actually have read the books, Harry Potter, I think more times than I have watched the movies. Not that I don't like the movies, I think they're, they're fine. I just love so much of the books and I listen to them pretty much every single year. But I also listen to uh, A Christmas Carol read by Tim Curry. It's so good. Um, but yeah, Harry Potter, I don't think that it's one we would really associate with Christmas, especially the latter books, but because Christmas was such a, an important moment to Harry in the first story, the first book, because he'd never had a Christmas before, and it was this huge thing for him to be getting presents, like from Ron's mother sending him a sweater. Uh, I, I think that stands out to a lot of us. And I do think that, yeah, I, I don't remember if the books came out at Christmas time, but I mean, I was always reading them. I mean, I would read them and then finish them. And then if there weren't more books out, I, I would reread the ones that were out <laughs> all year until the next one would come out. As far as movies go, uh, Lord of the Rings, definitely. And that, I, I think I've already said why, is because yes, just all the reasons that you guys said. They came out during Christmas time and you know, there's this bleak sort of feeling to it, and you know, the, especially the, the second and third movie. But yeah, like I said, the, the books are more of a springtime thing for me. And as far as a TV sh show goes, uh, this is gonna be totally different from what most people had. Frasier, my family absolutely adores Frasier, the old one, like the new one that's come out, we've watched and we're like, yeah, it's okay. I mean, the actor Kelsey Grammer is exactly the same as he was back in the 90s when the, the, the first, you know, the, the original Frasier series came out. But oh my gosh, I absolutely love Frasier and they have some really good Christmas episodes. They are so funny. Uh, if you haven't watched Frasier before, it's very intelligent, uh, quick humor, and <laughs> it's so funny. I, we are quoting Frasier all the time. Niles is the best. I mean, you couldn't have Frasier without Niles, which is why I think that the new series isn't doing as well as it could be. But I understand the actor was ready to move on from that role, so that's fine. And that's all I got time for to look at wintertime favorites from all of you. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your 2023 and that your new year is awesome. Set your goals, really go for them. Please be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. If you're feeling super generous, check out my Patreon or Ko-fi or hit the money heart thanks button down below. I can take tips and that's it. I'll see you next year.